welcome back to part 2 of the Physical Dorm Guide. Next up is pets. I would highly recommend early on you get a Desert Wolf or a Peko Peko pet. They both provide ignore defense and are quite cheap. Your endgame pet is the Orc Baby because it provides you with max HP percentage and also taunt which makes it great for MVP and mini hunting. I highly recommend you get the pet house for your house, as the pet house is able to quickly increase the intimacy of all the required pets you need to fuse the orc baby to level 10. Two other ones I find useful is the Obeen and the Osiris, which are great because it provides some emergency resurrection in case you die. Sometimes from limited events, you're able to get some pets. Some of these pets will give you max HP percentage or other great damage boosts, so keep a lookout for them and try to get them. Next up is gear recommendations. This section assumes you start a dorm without acceleration. In ROM 2.0, you only get that once per account, so any additional characters start without any gear. If you started with an accelerated dorm, use all the gear they provided early on. I talk about headwear gacha a lot in this section. To a roll for these, go to Frontera and go to this machine, and then spend 30 blue tickets. You can get previous months by clicking on this button. In this video, I talk about which months to roll for. There are a lot of ideal dorm gotchas, but I would highly recommend you start rolling for Abyss Cry as early as possible. This is one of the best headgear in the game and it makes a huge difference. Look for it under the February 2020 month. Let's talk about the equipment priority when going from a witch to a summoner. First, you should definitely get the weapon. You can craft it in lasagna, it's called Wonderful Foxgrass. Focus on upgrading your Wonderful Foxgrass to Fine Foxgrass. This will give you the most damage for the amount of Xenia it costs. You can also craft the Elegant Dorm Manto for an easy 3% attack increase as well. Upgrading the Elegant Dorm Manto to Elegant Dorm Suit also provides you with an extra 2% more attack. For offhand, the Rosa Bracelet is the best. It provides 25% ignore defense, which is great. You can either buy one from the exchange or you can craft the Floral Bracelet from Islud and just upgrade it to Rosa Bracelet. For Garment, buy the Ancient Cape, which will provide ignore defense 15%. For footgear, you can craft the elegant Dorum shoes from Lasagna. If you have the Zenny for it, you can use the Ruin Boots for an extra 3% attack. However, this is quite expensive, since it costs over 3 million Zenny for it. For accessories, I would recommend you use gloves. It provides you with some nice dexterity. If you have the Zenny for it, Fairy in a Bottle is also very good, since it provides a lot of raw attack. For the head, the Archer Hat is great. It costs about 300,000 Zenny, and it provides you with 5 dexterity. Also, every refining level increases dexterity by 1. Alternatively, you can also use the Cat Ear Beret for 5% more attack. For face, the Nut on Head is great, it provides a Ignore Defense 5%. For mouth, the Abyss Whisper is great, you can buy from the exchange, it gives you 3% attack. For the back, the Quiver is great, it provides you with a range attack 7%. For the tail, the Ice Ridge Sculpture is good, it provides you with Ignore Defense 3% and also 20 more attack. Once you become a Spirit Summoner, you need to start having more HP to deal more damage. Socket your elegant dorm shoes and put a ferris card in it. That will give you an extra 10% HP. Buy a socketed Gobin's armor. This will give you a lot of vitality and a lot of HP. Buy the Peko Peko card which will give you plus 10% HP and put it into the Gobin's armor. Buy two plus 8 survival rings. These don't need to be socketed as they are very expensive. This will give you an extra 6% HP. Also, enhancing it will provide you with more HP for every single level. As a summoner, hopefully you are able to socket your weapon. A socketing weapon provides you with a lot of damage because you can put in different cards. For example, if you have two Desert Wolf cards, then you can deal an extra 50% damage to small monsters. After you socket your weapon, you should work on synthesizing it as well to the fine pink foxgrass for a lot of extra damage. For face, I found that Silent Sinking was really great. It provides you with 2 vitality and also skill damage plus 4%. You should also work on synthesizing your gold beans as that will also provide you with a lot of HP. The best endgame headgear is Abyss Cry, as it can provide you with the 50% ignore defense from having 3 Mino cards. If you're unlucky like me and have failed to roll for it and given up hope, you can also buy the plus 10 Glacier Power. This will also provide you with that 50% ignore defense effect. This extra 50% ignore defense is very useful. If you have over 130% ignore defense without wearing Rosa Bracelet, then you should switch to a Niles Bracelet or get the Hellions Bracelet, which is the synthesis of the Niles Bracelet. Before I got Glacier Power, I used the White Knight Helm as it provides you with 10% more damage to minis and MVPs. It also goes higher depending on how much you refine it. For Mouth, you can get a plus 10 Corsair for an extra 10% HP. You can also try rolling for the Kraken Key which will provide you with 8% more HP and some damage reduction from the March 2020 Gacha Machine. 
For back, you can use Devil Wings for an extra 5% damage. I used that for quite a while before I was able to roll for the One-Eyed Captain, which is from the March 2020 Gacha Machine. For the face, the Juggling Queen is the best gacha you can get, which is from the April 2020 Gacha Machine. The Winter Crown from December 2020 for skill damage is also great. For the endgame tail, you can buy a banana split tail from the exchange as it is good versus bosses. Thunder God Sun is the best right now since it provides you with extra damage to MVPs and minis. You can roll for that in the November 2020 month of the Gacha Machine. For accessories, some people use Dark Tooth Gloves, some people use Survival Rings, or you can use one of each like me. The Dark Tooth Gloves will provide you with extra damage and is very useful against brutes. This is what I do for cards. For offhand, I use the Agent of Love that gives me 5 attack and ignore defense 3%. For armor, I use the Moonex Star card that gives me Ignore Defense 15%. For garment, I use the Orc Zombie Star card to give me 3000 more HP. For footgear, I use the Ferris card that gives me 10% more HP. For accessories, I use the Ultraman card that does 8% damage to Brutes and Demon Monsters. I use this because a lot of the MVPs I kill are Brutes. For my other accessory card, I use the Zipper Bear Star card for 3% more attack. For headgear, I use the Andre Star card for Penetration 3% and Ignore Defense 3%. For weapon, I use two Minoris cards. This is my equipment, but this is nowhere near the end game type of equipment dorms have. For end game, I've seen a lot of dorms with plus 15 weapons, plus 15 gold beans, plus 12 rune boots, plus 12 elegant dorm shoes, plus 12 survival rings, plus 12 dog tooth gloves, and the Eclipse Star card, which provides you with a ton of extra HP. This is an example from a friend from Bunny who wishes to remain anonymous. Next is Gear 4th Enchants. For the 4th Enchants, try getting the Ignore Defense through Morale or Range Damage through Arch on your Armor and Weapon. Sometimes it's better to snap these from the Exchange because it's a lot harder to roll for them yourself. Not all Enchants can occur on each type of equipment, but in general, if it allows for it, try getting Physical Damage percent increase, Max HP percentage, and Vitality. I found that these added the most damage to my dorm. Next up is farming. In episode 7, they changed the loot and level penalty when you're above or below the target monster you are farming. The main benefit is now you can farm weaker monsters longer without having to deal with the penalty. As a result, you can farm more efficiently. See this chart from the YouTuber Blueberries for more details. I'll have a link to his channel in the description. As you can see, as long as you stay within 30 levels, you won't be penalized. The loot penalty isn't bad even if you go beyond 30 levels of a monster. I often farm in places where I'm above the 30 level difference, but because that place is so efficient and things spawn so quickly that it's actually still worth it. Now let's talk about some recommended farming spots for different levels. For which, do farming lasagna and just kill the squirrels up until level 30 or so. As a spiritualist, you can go to Muran Mountain for Menbla and Hornets from level 30 to 50. From level 50 to 60, you can kill desert wolves in Morak. From level 60 to 80, you can kill Minoris and hopefully get a Mino card drop from Pyramid 2F. When you become a summoner, you can do some AoE farming now, so I would suggest these following places. You can do farming in Cord Forest, realistically about level 80 and higher. If you can watch out things earlier, by all means come earlier. I highly recommend you use the Hockey Mask because they're demi-human, also using the Desert Wolf card for small creatures. Also using the Water Converter because they're fire monsters. This is my favorite spot on Cord Forest Depth because the monsters are aggressive on this map but come towards you and more likely get hit by the AoE. Usually you can get 3 at once very consistently. Next, once you're strong enough, you can do farming in Glass Helm Culverts from around level 90 to 115. For this, I highly recommend you have a double socketed weapon because you'll need some cards. First, you'll have to have the Drain Lair card for an extra 20% extra damage to water monsters. Then you'll also need a Menblatt card for a 20% extra damage to earth monsters. This is my favorite spot if you're just killing stings and annoyance. As you get stronger and you're able to kill injustices and cramps, then I would recommend this spot which is the most ideal spot on the map. But this spot is often busy, so this is a secondary spot which I choose. From around level 115 to 140, I would recommend you farm harpies in Enbrach's field. This is my favorite spot. I recommend you use the Mandagora flower card for 20% extra damage to wind monsters. 
And also use the Earth Converter because you're hitting when monsters. Later, do farming in Plains of Ida when you get stronger and are about level 140. You'll be farming for staples and man-eating grass in this location. You can use two Menba cards since these are Earth monsters, and you can also use the Fire Converter to help with one-shotting them. Once you hit level 140, now you have a dilemma. Do you farm for Job EXP or do you farm for Zenny? If you want to continue farming for Zenny, continue farming in Plains of Ida. However, if you need to gain more Job EXP, you need to go to Wasteland. The Wasteland map is special because there's buffs that are only for those maps. As a result, you can get some buffs that will give you an extra 60% Job EXP, which tremendously helps with Job EXP farming. Personally, if you don't need the Zenny, I would recommend you farm in Wasteland and just grind out those Job EXP levels so you can become a Spirit Whisperer. Then you can return back to Plains of Ida after. Next up is multi-classes. Now, this is a feature where you do have to pay 80 BCC each time, but you do get some guaranteed attribute bonuses and you get to have some extra fun trying out new classes. So I still think this is worth it. Different multi-classes give you different bonuses for your character. For example, if I choose to multi-class to a priest, at the second job I'll get 4 vitality, and at the third job I'll get 6 vitality. As a result, I get 10 extra vitality, which is really nice. If you want more vitality, you can multi-class to the crusader, priest, or novice. If you have the life burst ruin with a third line and you need more agility, you can consider multi-classing to the assassin or dancer. If you need more dexterity, you can multi-class to hunter and sorcerer. Lastly, let's do a damage test with Endless Tower. My dorm isn't complete and there's still plenty of improvements that can be done. This damage is nowhere near the true potential of dorms. I want to show you the free-to-play damage and also the damage without the Abyss Cry effect or the Life Burst Third Line Rune. I think it's important to show how powerful Dorum is even without those two things. For these experiments, we're eating a Dex B meal, a Vitality B meal, and 6 foods. We'll also eat a Fire Converter as well to do double damage to the orcs. Here are the stats from my free-to-play Dorum. She has about 3,400 attack and almost 200,000 health. Here's her adventure handbook, and you can see how little deposit she actually has. She'll be using two Minoris cards for a weapon to deal extra damage to large monsters. As you can see, she can hold her own, she's able to hit for 500,000 damage each, and she's also able to take some shots without dying. Next, let's go to my main. I'm going to show you my attributes first. I have 900,000 HP and 9,000 attack. I removed Glacier Power to show you the damage if you didn't have Abyss Cry or Glacier Power. Also, I removed my Life Burst Ruin so I'm not doing 1.5 extra damage. Let's fight these two orcs first. I do 11 million to them and kill them both instantly. Let's kill something harder in ET, so we'll go to floor 100. You can see Jorm's great survivability as I'm stuck in hit stun and being hit by quite a lot. I do have to use a potion to heal myself. However, once I can get a shot off, I can kill them fairly quickly. Lastly, I'll equip everything again and now have the life burst ruin. Now I'm going to go up and have my revenge. As you can see, everything dies in one shot. Thanks for watching this guide, and I hope you'll have a ton of fun playing Dorum in Ragnarok Mobile. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. 